Hello all, this video is about planar chirality and helicity. In the last video I had described about axial chirality and we had ended by telling about the axially chiral binol and binap. So this is the molecule binal, binol which is used as a ligand for transition metal catalyzed asymmetric synthesis and the two enantiomers of binol are readily separable. And this is the example of binap which is an axially chiral phosphine ligand and this is widely used in as I told you in transition metal catalyzed asymmetric synthesis. So this molecule you can have R binap and S binap and depending on what is the sort of uh, transformation that you need you can choose between whether you need to use R binap or S binap. This molecule is an example of a lithium aluminium hydride and here you have R form of this compound. Similarly, you can create the S form also. So, these type of ligands or these type of reagents become very important in asymmetric synthesis. So, now we'll move on to learn about planar chirality. So, just like an axis, a plane also can be chiral. And what is meant by a chiral plane? So, this is uh, the right side what shown here is an example of an ANSA compound or a cyclophane where you have a phenyl ring which is connected by a sort of ring sort of structure. So it's just like a basket. You hold a basket which with flowers, right? So uh, what is meant by the chiral plane? The plane passing through the molecule in such a way that when you place a substituent on the plane, it will destroy the symmetry of the perpendicular planes passing through the molecule. Then it's called a chiral plane. So for example, you have this molecule, actually this benzene ring lying in a plane imagine that it is lying in your desk. So if you have a substituent which is destroying the symmetry of this uh, benzene ring which has a ring on top of it then you have a chiral plane. So plane of the benzene ring here is a chiral plane. So you can view the molecule here the benzene ring is lying on this plane and you have this ring here. So once you put a substituent here the symmetry is lost. R1 or any one, even if you have only R1 or R2 also, the symmetry is lost. Same way here, same is the case, goes the case here. Okay, so that is meant by the chiral plane. So chiral plane is the plane which is passed through the molecule in such a way that when you place a substituent on the plane, the symmetry of the perpendicular plane gets lost. Now again, let's see how to give the CIP nomenclature for this. So again, as I told you before, the way you give CIP notation for planar molecule will be different from how you give it for axial. And axial, how you give for axial is different from how you give for centers. So in case of planar uh, chirality, what you have to do is you have to choose a pilot atom which is outside the plane, okay, but it is attached to an atom in the plane. Second, we move through the atoms to find the priority group. And again, if the configuration is clockwise, you give it as air, otherwise you give it as S. So for example, in this cyclophane, you have the bromo substituent, which is destroying the symmetry of the plane. And you choose the pilot atom. So you can either choose this oxygen or this oxygen as the pilot atom. But we choose to give the priority based on which is closer to the substituent. So therefore, this particular oxygen gets higher priority than this oxygen. So you go a one here. You go and then you try to move towards the plane, towards the substituent. So you have 1, 2 and 3, you will move in a clockwise rotation, the rotation is R. This is example of a biphenylene molecule where you have one phenyl ring over another phenyl ring, just like a double-decker bus. And the substituent is CO2H here and the pilot atom will be the sulfur because it is closer to CO2H. So you move from sulfur towards the plane to the substituent, you move it in an anti-clockwise rotation, so your notation is S. So this is S by phenylene, this is R cyclophane. Okay, similarly the enantiomers will be S and R by phenylene, which also you know how to uh, write it. So here is another by phenylene molecule with a CO2H as the substituent and both the pilot atoms are carbon, but we choose this as a pilot atom. So from the pilot atom, we move towards the CO2H, you do a clockwise rotation, so it is R. And when you have two substituents, what do you do? 
You select the pilot atom which leads to a shorter path to the higher priority substituent on the aromatic ring. Okay, so in, with chlorine and CO2H, you know that the higher priority atom will be chlorine. So the pilot atom will be here. What is the carbon here? So from this carbon, when you move towards the chlorine, you have a clockwise rotation. Notation is R. Another example is the dye of poly substituted metallocenes. You know this molecule is called ferrocene, where you have an iron, which is sandwiched between two cyclopentadienes. So when you have substituents here, but the symmetry is lost, and you have uh, planar chirality. Another example is provided by transcycloctene. Transcycloctene is again chiral because of the restriction of this uh, swinging of this methylene chain. And in case of transcyclonone, but the optically active form can be isolated only at minus 80 degree. But transcycloctene is extremely mobile. So you have these rings going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And you can have the R and S in Anshoma. So this is a natural product called cavicularin. This is a single crystal X-ray of that compound, which shows planar chirality. In fact, this molecule has both planar chirality and axial chirality, as is evident from this figure. With that, let us now move to helicity. So this is another form of chiral motive, helicity, and a well-known molecule is DNA. For the helix, is the DNA. You know that. Uh, other than that, nucleic acid proteins, polysaccharides, all have this sort of helical geometry. And how is the helix stabilized? Helix is stabilized by hydrogen bonding, metal cations, hydrophobic interactions, all that contribute to the stability. In case of the DNA molecule, you know, which has DNA has A, T, G, C, adenine, thymine, coenine, and cytosine, and it's the hydrogen bonding between the complementary bases and hydrophobic interactions between the facing bases, which is stabilizing this double helix. So let us uh, mo look more closely into a molecular helix. A molecular helix can be of two types. It can be uh, some sort of cylindrical arrangement as well as can be a sort of conical arrangement. And helix is defined by the axis, B by the screw sense, that is the helicity, and 3 by the pitch, that is the ratio of axially linear to angular properties. And the chirality is due to handedness. A molecular helix can be cylindrical as well as it can be conical. So when you move in an anti-clockwise manner, you have M helix, and you move in a clockwise manner, you have P helix. Okay, that is how you have this as M helix and this as P helix. So P is denoting plus and M is denoting minus. So a right-handed helix is plus and a left-handed helix is minus. Helical molecules are very important. For example, this is an hexahelicine molecule. You can see the hexahelicine molecule. Where, because of this overcrowding, you can't have all the benzene rings on the same plane. Okay, so uh, the la final uh, end uh, benzene rings either come below the plane or on above the plane. So you have minus as well as plus here. So it's minus because from top to bottom you rotate, you have anti-clockwise rotation. Here you have from top to bottom rotation, you have clockwise rotation, so it is plus. So if you place this uh, hexahelicine in a notebook, you, it actually requires three pages. That is what is shown here. And this figure is taken from P.S. Kulsey, pseudochemistry and mechanisms to solve problems. Angle between the two planes is 58.5 degree and they are remarkably stable in, in anchomas. So overcrowding is one cause for helicity. And this is another uh, description where you have only three phenyl groups, but the presence of this methyl group uh, will cause an overcrowding which causes uh, loss of planarity for this molecule which is very well depicted in this molecular model you can see the helix the p helix as well as the m helix okay so these are examples of higher helicines okay so just to know that helix is not restricted to five uh, phenyl rings or six phenyl rings it can be seven helicine eight nine ten eleven up to eighteen helicines and people have used this for a variety of applications. So these are helicine-based supramolecular aggregates. These are helicoidal wire called nerve stacking, stacking and this is twisted fiber. So all these are very good electrical and for the properties, which can be used as electrical supramolecular assemblies. So that is about helicity and planar chirality. I hope the video is clear to you. Uh, please uh, post questions if you have any which I will be happy to answer. Thank you.